You're keeping it here on MBS Breakfast Meeting with myself, Jackie Mutasi. Now something, if you watched last night's episode of Impact Uganda, you know that the rates of, of teenage pregnancy are high, the rates of maternal deaths are high, the rates of, of children being born and dying from, from prenatal diseases are very high in Uganda. But here in Uganda, we've made significant progress towards the reduction of matern maternal mortality from, from th 438 per 100,000 live births to about 336 per 100,000 live births. Now, according, however, for the last 10 years, the, na the neonatal mortality rate has stagnated at 27 deaths per 1,000 live births, falling short of the target of 16 deaths per 1,000 live births, which is, what we, which is what the goal is here in Uganda. So in that, in that, for that pre-context, there is the third National Safe Motherhood Conference happening this year, this month on the 23rd to the 25th of October. So joining me this morning to discuss and tell us the statistics on the issue and what is being done ahead of the conference is Dr. Deo Gracious Migade. He is the Senior Medical Officer, Reproductive and Child Health at the Ministry of Health. Lovely to have you here in the yeah. studio. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Also joining us is Dr. Imelda Namwagembe, Senior Consultant, Mulago Specialized Women and Neonatal. Ward. Lovely to have you, Dr. Imelda. Uh, thank you, and good morning, viewers. Okay. Also joining us is a midwife, Miss Joseline Naluja. Lovely to have you, Joseline. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. I'll start with you, Dr. Del Gracious. What are the key contributing factors to maternal and prenatal deaths here in Uganda, and how can they be addressed? Yes, thank you very much, Jackie, and uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, like you've mentioned, um, a lot of progress has been made in the reduction of maternal and newborn mortality in Uganda uh, over the past five years or so. Uh, currently, the country has been able to have the maternal deaths reduced from 336 per 100,000 live births to 189 per 100,000 live births. And then neonatal mortality has slightly reduced from 27 to 22 as per the recent uh, UDHS report, which was just released uh, uh, last month. Uh, we know that um, this progress has been made in the country uh, due to several efforts that have been uh, uh, input by the different stakeholders, spearheaded by the Minister of Health. Um, we know that at least uh, for the mothers, um, the leading causes of these deaths uh, basically has been around uh, bleeding, which contributes to up to 40% of all the maternal deaths that we are, we are registering in our facilities which roughly translates to four out of every 10 deaths. So we know that at least for f every four out of 10 deaths in this country, for the mothers dying is attributed to bleeding after delivery. Um, other issues like uh, hypertensive conditions in pregnancy, um, infections associated with pregnancy and delivery. And when it comes to the newborn babies, uh, we know that um, the, main, the, the ma main issues are around the birth asphyxia, which is uh, understood as what we call fetal distress, and also prematurity, or low birth weight, and neonatal sepsis. So basically, these have been the main issues why um, these babies are dying, and all efforts as a country to reduce maternal and newborn mortality have been uh, directed towards reducing these um, leading causes of uh, mother and baby deaths. Yeah, Ms. Joslyn, as a midwife here in Uganda, what is your experience of maternal death or women giving birth? Uh, thank you, Jackie, for that question. Uh, just to, to, to tell you that uh, on the ground, the maternal mortality rate is, is, is happening. But as a midwife, I would like to hint on the key component of safe motherhood, and that is antenatal. Antenatal care is the entry, antenatal clinics are the entries of mothers, and that is where most of the things have to be captured. Women need to realize that they do not go to antenatal just as a routine or wait for a problem to start attending antenatal care. They need to start immediately. They realize that they are pregnant. The first time you miss your period, that is an indicator that probably I may be pregnant. And that is when you pack your bags and go to the hospital and start attending antenatal care. During that period, during that time, is when all the key factors that uh, Dr. Migadi has talked about that are contributors to maternal mortality and perinatal mortality, that is when we capture them. We screen the mothers for the risk that would 
uh, would complicate pregnancies and childbirth. For example, uh, hypertensive disorders, anemia-related uh, complications. We give mothers uh, um, preventive medication for like Fancida to help them prevent malaria that would complicate the pregnancy and childbirth because it leads to anemia when uh, during anemia in pregnancy. So there is a lot to, 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 to emphasize when it comes to the pillar of safe motherhood which is antenatal care such that everyone, uh, every mother in the community and uh, health workers also take it up to ensure that quality antenatal care is given to women and with emphasis to high risk. So screening every mother at risk of, you know, at risk of maternal mortality or any contributing factor should be screened and managed accordingly without forgetting that that is when we also as women prepare for childbirth and preparedness comes uh, af uh, after anticipating your expected date of delivery you know around this date and month I will be having my child so I must prepare for transport plan for transport ahead of time how will I reach the health facility and I also must know how much money I need for emergency that I need to have on me such that in case of anything you avoid any kind of delays as a result of finances. Absolutely. Yes. Dr. Imelda, as a senior consultant at Mulago Specialized Hospital, what would you say are the contributing factors to the high maternity death rates that we have here in Uganda and how can they be addressed? Um, thank you so much Jackie and uh, to the viewers and to the colleagues that has been submitted. Some of the issues that have really, the circumstances that have really been associated with the uh, the high number of these poor events are mainly the three delays. We categorize them in three delays. There's what we call delay number one, whereby delay number one, this is the issue where there are delays at the level of the family, the individual person, the families surrounding that person and the community in the sense that there are, there's a tendency for us to take decisions at that level. The woman herself fails to take decision in time or is not supported in case of an emergency and then when the emergency occurs, they are not ready, they take time or they end up at times going to unskilled people and by the time they get to the higher levels, even there's a problem, it's already too late. Then there's also what we call, in that case, in order to address that kind of delay, the government has worked strongly with the partners and various people at the various levels to ensure that the communities are sensitized, creating awareness, like what the colleague has already talked about, the issues of antenatal, and embracing the issues of utilization of the various services at the various levels. Then there's what we call delay number two. When people have gone through the situation of making decisions, then there's issue of failure to get the appropriate transportation. Um, at times they don't, they've not saved money to be able to call, but now what we are emphasizing, especially during the time of pregnancy, or when the mother has a newborn, or even any other person, to encourage the aspect of saving, saving for transportation. For example, the pregnant woman should know, in the event of a problem, who can I call on? Like these days, utilizing the appropriate technology, like a phone, knowing that I can call such and such a driver, or I can access such and such, and the Minister of Health and the government and all the partners have worked together to strengthen the aspect of ambulance, emergency ambulance transportation. Of course, the entire country is not yet covered, but there are those efforts which are going on to strengthen the ambulance system and also to enhance the aspect of even the inter-facility referrals so that before the mother reaches a certain point in case of an emergency, you are encouraged to call that facility. For example, if you are going to say the national referral or any other hospital to give a call to those places and thus health facilities are encouraged to provide those numbers which people can call and communicate that we are bringing so and so with such and such a problem to ensure that the other facility can prepare as this emergency comes in. Then the other aspect of the delay is the delay which happens at the health facility level, the third delay. The third delay, the Minister of Health again is trying to work hard with the various people, with the various leadership, with the various health workers to ensure that the supplies are available in that place, the health workers are trained and skilled, so that by the time these people come in, the patients come in, especially in this case, we are talking about the mothers, by the time they come in, they can be readily looked after, they can be catered for by skilled people, and the other emergency supplies, if they can be available, issues of availability of blood, by the availability of blood, we need to remember that it's not, not only the health workers, even the community sensitizing them to ensure that they can be able to donate that blood, so that by the time it's required in case of an 
emergency situation. The colleague has already mentioned that one of the major killers is excessive bleeding. So those issues have to be available. And thus, addressing those delays is critical. And in this case, um, when we, the, the Minister of Health, again working with the various partners, have tried to work closely, trying to bring on board what we call the health system building blocks. In that case, when we talk about the health system building blocks, we are talking about the workforce, who is the kind of person we have. Is this health worker supported? Is this health worker skilled? Are there regular updates to this health worker so that we are up to date regarding the appropriate skills? Do we have the appropriate attitude? All those have to continuously go on. Then there's, of course, the service delivery. Can you offer a timely service delivery? Are the required things available, the medicine, the supplies, the equipment? In that case, the government has to work closely with the various people to ensure all those are in place. Then, again, as this goes on, are we utilizing, are we able to capture the data? Are we able to track? Are we able to utilize so that gradually we learn from what is happening? We utilize those statistics to continuously improve what is happening. And then the other aspect, the finances. The government has put in an effort to ensure that we have the finances. However, we need to do a lot more because it's recommended that of the GDP, that is the gross national product, the, the going to the health se sector is supposed to target what is recommended is about 15%. The government has put in an effort to increase from 6.4. Is it now at about 7 to 8? But they still need more in order to be able to provide quality service delivery and to ensure the other aspects are available. And of course, not the mentioning the governance and leadership, last but not the least, is very critical, so that the leaders are mobilized, are trained, are encouraged to enhance supervision, to take the lead and ensure all these various aspects are happening. And in that way, the government has been able to make some strides, but I just want to remind uh, the colleagues in here and the viewers that yes, we are celebrating some of the strikes that have been made, but we need even to triple our effort, each and every one of their various levels, to ensure that now we are even looking at the bigger picture. Because when we look at the sustainable development goals, where we are targeting that nationally, our maternal mortality ratio for each and every country should have at least 140 per 100,000 live births or less. We are happy that we are now at 189 compared to where we were some time back, 438 per 100,000, then 336, now 189. But we need to sustain the momentum and even work further, put the appropriate resources, each one to double their efforts so that we can be able to even make a contribution to the bigger global target. Because the global target is that we need to have a maternal mortality ratio of at least about 70 or less per 100,000 live birth. But nationally, if we can st struggle and ensure that we can uh, have a maternal mortality ratio of less than 140 per 100,000 live births, it implies that we'll be reducing greatly to the mothers who are dying. Because previously we are saying that a full matter to, yes, we've reduced, now it's no longer full matter to, maybe about 8 to 10 women dying, still that is not acceptable. We need to double or triple our efforts so that we can be able to achieve those various indices to improve further. And the colleague has already mentioned the issues related to the pillars of safe motherhood. She has mentioned the antenatal, but I want to remind the viewers that the pillars of safe motherhood, in addition to the antenatal which has been mentioned, where we need to target not less than eight quality contacts. We need to ensure that even the family planning uptake so that we can space so that people have the children they are ready to look after, so that they are able to cater for, so that we target quality but not just quantity. The pillar of family planning is also very critical. The obstetric component, I've already talked about it, the emergency preparedness, and the government has put in an effort to functionalize the whole center force so that they can even provide comprehensive emergency obstetric care. And then, of course, the postnatal care, the newborn, the post-abortion care, dealing with the issues of complication related to the abortion, and dealing with the issues of sexually transmitted infection, treating and preventing them, including HIV, and not forgetting the issues of the equity, the behavior change, to bring the men on board. It takes two to tango, it takes the man and woman to have the pregnancy. So we want to invite the men to be on board, to support their partners, to support their wives, so that these people can have quality care. And once you have the health woman supported, then it's likely to impact the entire family. Yeah. So we want to invite each and everyone has a role to play as we continue to say health for each and every woman and each and every newborn.
You're right. Dr. Imelda, I like that you said everyone has a role to play, including government, including specialists like yourselves. But we're talking about mothers, young people or older people who are having children. How can they know, and I'll ask you, Dr. Dewa Gracious, how, what are the danger signs before and after pregnancy that people can look out for to, to change this narrative? Okay, yes, thank you very much. Um, so in terms of danger signs, uh, like you've mentioned, everyone has a role to play in uh, improving uh, maternal and newborn health. So, but for the family, for the, for the mother and the caretakers of the mothers or the babies, there are some danger signs that they can always look out for and seek care um, early enough before complications come in. So uh, during pregnancy, we know that uh, signs like uh, bleeding during pregnancy, excessive headache, vomiting, uh, fever, uh, blurring of vision, um, or even convulsions, unconsciousness. So some of these signs could point to uh, the complications that uh, we have talked about, like hypertension during pregnancy, or um, after delivery, when the mother has delivered. Again, if they go back home and they get uh, excessive bleeding at home, or if they're having fever, or they're feeling unwell, or any um, situation that the mother might be in that they feel is not the normal uh, way of how they, they, they live, this can point to a danger sign and they need to seek care early enough. And then for the babies, um, things like um, excessive crying, uh, poor breastfeeding habits, um, uh, fever, vomiting. So it's basically what the families and mothers need to do is that whenever there's anything that um, seems unusual in their health, there's need for them to seek care early enough in all our nearby health facilities so that they prevent the first delay that uh, Dr. Imelda has talked about. Mr. Yeah, Luja, you. do you find as a midwife that people actually detect the signs early and seek help or is this an actual issue that people don't know the signs so they don't come to you for help? Well, thank you Jackie for that question. I would say um, people, some people know about the signs while others don't know about them. However, some may also choose to take them for granted thinking that probably they can resolve in the shortest time possible. So that's why I need to emphasize that there is need to uh, create awareness and give as much information as we can in empowering women to know about these danger signs and also emphasize the uh, necessity of seeking care very early. So in, as soon as the mother uh, identifies any of the signs that Dr. Uh, Migadi has talked about, there is need for them to walk into the health facility close to them and seek care to avoid the complications that may arise. Because when it comes to pregnancy or childbirth, there is no sign that you could take for granted. Every sign, however small you may think it is, is communicating something that would, 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 be, would, would lead to a complication that would take us to maternal mortality. So uh, I think our role as health workers and, and every, stake, every stakeholder out there is to emphasize, to, to reach out to every mother, just like the theme of this uh, year's uh, uh, Safe Motherhood Conference. We need to reach out to every mother and to reach out to every newborn with this information, with empowerment, with sensitization. Well, let's, let's empower them with, me, with messages that they may be able to embrace and take charge of their, their health and be responsible as a whole. Dr. Imelda, perhaps you can talk to us about the third national Safe Motherhood Conference that's coming up next Wednesday. Yes, um, the conference is coming up. I um, want to thank each and everyone who has participated in uh, the organization in ensuring that the funds are available. It's again one of the ways of uh, of dissemination, of sharing information, of trying to see what are the good practices that have taken place, what are the quality improvement practices that have happened in the various areas. It's kind of a time to learn. It's going to be held at Munyonyo, and today it's starting off with adolescent component. You've talked about the issues of the adolescent pregnancy, which is still high burden in our setting. So today there's going to be sharing and discussions, various aspects that have happened in the area of research, and trying to see how we can even translate from research to the actual practice to improve um, the burden of adolescent pregnancy. And then the other aspect, like for example, a lot is being happening like 
in the aspect of the maternal and newborn death. There's a practice, what we call quality improvement practice, whereby in the event of a bad outcome of a death of a mother or a newborn, there's a policy whereby if such a death occurs, we are supposed to notify to fill in a notification and send to the Minister of Health, like communicating, you know, this death has occurred. And then within seven days, the team that participated in the care is supposed to sit down and review and say, what is it that we did well? What were the gaps? What can be done in order to prevent another death from similar circumstances from happening? So at the same conference, they are going to share various aspects of research that have happened, even the issues of what is happening regarding the continuity of tracking data in the maternal death surveillance and response, trying to find out what actions, what recommendations have we been able to implement and what can we continuously do differently in order to continue to make a difference in our setting to improve maternal and child survival and the health of our people in general. Absolutely. Dr. Dale Gracious, what is the role of the different stakeholders in the Safe Motherhood Conference? Okay, yes, thank you very much. Um, like uh, the theme goes that we have uh, to leave no one behind and everyone has a role to play. So our theme for this year basically looks at reaching every mother and every newborn. So in term, uh, in, in order of reaching every mother and every newborn, um, we have to involve every stakeholder, right from the national level to the mothers, as, as we've mentioned. So at the national level, Minister of Health has worked with several partners and stakeholders the different development partners, our UN agencies, USAID, and other IPs in the different region, regions to ensure that we have, um, number one, skilled health workers available in our health facilities. Uh, we have adequate commodities available, but also continuing to advocate and lobby for more resources for improving our, our maternal and newborn health in our facilities. Our uh, Minister of Health has also coordinated several um, capacity building initiatives across the country, trainings, and also worked with the different training institution to see that we have um, the best health workers available in the country to cater for our mothers and newborns, but also um, supervising them to ensure that they are available to provide this service. Um, in terms of um, our health workers, the health workers in the different facilities are involved, number one, in uh, providing quality ANC services. Like we mentioned, antenatal care is our entry into having a, a good outcome for both the mother and the babies. So who, the health workers are the ones available in our facilities to provide these quality services. And they're also um, responsible for providing the deliver and child health services, conducting the, the, the labor and delivery, but also monitoring mothers after delivery, what we call the postnatal period. And like we know, most of our mothers who die, die within this postnatal period. So it's a very critical part of um, care for the mothers and also survivor for the newborn. So uh, it's a role of our health workers to ensure that the mothers and newborns receive quality postnatal care. And then we have already mentioned about the role of the, uh, um, the mothers and men. So uh, in our new strategic thinking, we, ha we have emphasized the clear role of the man as um, a partner, but also a pillar of change. We think that for us to reduce um, maternal and newborn deaths, the fathers, the husbands, or the men need to also be very much involved in the, in, the, in the care and services given to these mothers. They need to support them, uh, their wives throughout pregnancy, uh, during antenatal, making sure that there's available support, transport. We've seen that some delays are due to transport coming from home. So this is a role, and this is where a man needs to come from, but also during labor and delivery, but postnatal. These mothers need to come back for postnatal checkup, the babies need to come back for immunization and other care. So it's the role of the man to ensure that they stand in and support their family. And we think that once we have the man involved, we shall be able to move um, very big steps in reducing mothers and baby deaths in the country. And when you say involved, you don't just mean financially, I'm sure. Definitely. So we need them to be physically involved, emotionally, emotionally involved, but also take part in the decisions the medical decisions that these mothers are, are undergoing. So the, 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 what we call um, um, family-centered care and male involvement basically looks at having not only the mother, but also the family and the husband participate fully in the care for the mothers and, uh, and their newborns in our facilities. Mm -hmm. And we think that once we do this, we shall be able to 
sustain this reduction that we've seen, but also get in more efforts to even achieve our higher goals, like Dr. Imelda has mentioned. Dr. Imelda also mentioned that the three weeks leading up to the, to the conference next week have been packed with information, exercises. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Yes, so thank you very much. Yes, so um, our conference is on. Next week will be the main conference from 23rd to 25th. And today is the adolescent health. So as Minister of Health and other stakeholders, we've dedicated these first three months of October to raise awareness about issues on maternal health, uh, issues around the, the risks for most of these causes of mortality. We have engaged different, um, uh, different people at the different levels of care. We have had several activities in the districts all aimed at raising awareness. We think that we, when we reach all the mothers and all the babies and all the men and everyone involved, you know for maternal health, we think that everyone has a role to play our religious leaders, our community leaders. This message is most of these deaths that we, we are seeing are preventable, and they are preventable right from the community. So we see that by the time a mother dies from the facility, a lot has happened. They have delayed from homes. Some have gone through unprofessional skilled, um, traditional birth attendants. Some have uh, taken uh, um, unprescribed medication. So we think that it's, it's beyond the health facilities. So I want to ensure that everyone is knowledgeable on what to do and how to contribute to this great cause of reducing uh, maternal and newborn deaths in the country. So all these activities have been basically aimed at reaching all the stakeholders involved in this uh, fight to reduce maternal mortality. Yeah, thank you. As we lead up to the third Safe Motherhood Conference, what are your closing remarks this morning? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my parting shots, uh, first, first and foremost, I would like to to part in this way, encouraging women and men to take uh, family planning as a key factor in promoting maternal and child health. Every time you reduce your chances of giving birth, you are reducing the risk of dying to pregnancy or labor-related complications. So it is very important that the communities out there, couples out there and women, embrace the need for family planning methods. And lastly, um, these convers conversations like this about maternal health are continuing. For example, today we have the annual general meeting for the midwives and it, it's taking place at Grand Ho Global Hotel right now as I speak. And we are uh, talking more about how midwives can champion maternal and newborn health. We want to reach out uh, to every mother and to every newborn, and midwives are at the center of this. Absolutely. Dr. Imelda, what are your closing remarks this morning? Um, thank you, Jackie. Um, thank you. I want to thank everyone and those who enabled us to be here. I just want to encourage each and everyone that to remind all of us that when it comes to health, each one of us has a role to play. And once we are talking about maternal and newborn health, usually those are some of the, the indices that really um, internationally are really looked at to see how a country is performing. So each one of us has a role to play, and most of the things, like what the colleague has said, are preventable. Let us strengthen the health systems, let us strengthen the workforce, let us ensure that the finances, the service delivery, the supplies to ensure that we improve the readiness of our facilities. Let the leaders continue to do their part, taking on the leadership and the supervision. And let's utilize the data available, learning from it, and continuously improve. And of course, emphasizing the pillars of safe motherhood, the issues of the quality antenatal care. Let mothers not wait for until when there's a problem and then they go for checkup because we are emphasizing early detection of a problem, then it's likely to have early interventions and increasing on the chances of saving our mothers. Family planning, the colleague has already mentioned, the emergence of obstetric care, issues of the readiness, and ensuring that what we need to use is available. And that's the service providers. We need to have the appropriate attitudes so that we offer the, the services in a timely manner. And let's ensure that um, all the other aspects that are required are in place and ensure we address those delays, the first delay, the second delay, and the third delay. And I believe if each one takes on the mantle and aiming at that bigger goal, I believe that we'll even go a bigger stride higher to reduce these body indices, especially reducing the mothers and death of our newborns and preventing the unnecessary 
severe morbidities, which are a result of some of the complications. So I believe that together we continue to make a difference and make our country a better place to live. Absolutely. Dr. Deo Gracious, what are your closing remarks this morning? Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, so uh, mine would be around uh, emphasizing the need that everyone has a role to play. So we need to ensure that everyone understands their role and they fulfill it uh, appropriately to ensure that at least we have all deaths uh, averted, all preventable deaths averted, right from the families to the communities to the districts, politicians, religious leaders, everyone can add something to ensure that we have, um, as a country, reduce the maternal and newborn mortalities in the country. So Minister of Health, together with partners, we shall continue taking lead in these efforts. We know that we have uh, had some progress, as reflected in the reports, but we think that we need to sustain, but also double our efforts to achieve the bigger targets of having at least um, um, maternal mortality reduced by half by the time we, we reach 2030, as set by our national targets. Um, otherwise, thank you for hosting us. Thank, thank you, the partners who have supported us to be in this place. And um, we shall be having our conference next week, and we hope that all the discussions and um, the sharing, the best practice, and discussing around the different policies we have in the country should be able to contribute to this uh, cause that we've been discussing here. Thank you, Jack. How can the audience get involved, if there is any way? Yeah, thank you very much. So the audience will be following. We are going to have um, the main event uh, um, um, streamed across most of our media platforms, uh, the social media. We shall have a lot of social media presence. But again, uh, we have, from the conference, we shall have resolutions and um, reports which will be widely shared by the different stakeholders. We have a lot of media presence at the conference. So definitely um, the, 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 the viewers out there will be able to follow and understand what has come out of this event. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to it. We look forward to the conference, but also the resolutions and changing the narrative when it comes to the numbers. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. That's all we have for you for breakfast meeting this morning. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. Take care.